My name is Ollie Samways. I'm the Head of Sales and Marketing at Westcotec, and I'm here to talk to you about the latest innovation that Westcotec have managed to bring to market. Um, it's an air quality monitoring product and electronic signage system uh, that we've uh, deployed, and there's various examples I can talk to you about, and also uh, the next steps for the future. The air quality monitors that we supply from Airly, um, I have one here in front of me now, uh, as you can see, very, very small unit, um, not much to it at all, which is good for vandalism. Um, they can be mounted to any existing infrastructure, such as street lights, and we have requests on bus shelters. Uh, they can be mounted to the back of our signs, hence the black colour, so they blend in with our black powder coat. Um, and they can also be solar powered if you struggle to find mains. Once mounted, um, they take about two weeks to calibrate, and once they've calibrated, you can look at PM 2.5, PM 10s, NOx gas levels, uh, you can look at humidity, temperature and wind speed. So you really do get a wealth of knowledge from a really tiny unit. Um, we all t as soon as we uh, started purchasing these, um, the first thing we did was test them against DEFRA reference stations, just to make sure that we knew they were as accurate as what was claimed. Um, we installed two of them at different uh, DEFRA reference stations around Norwich, and we were in 99% accuracy with those. Um, which obviously we were extremely pleased with. So at that point, we signed an exclusivity deal with Airly, which meant we were the sole suppliers for the UK. Um, our first job was then to find a authority or a private site that would like to run with this for a trial. Uh, we approached Central Bedfordshire Council, which was the first council that actually came to us looking for a solution. And we agreed on installing 25 sensors, so a network array within Central Bedfordshire. Um, that would then feed back in real time the levels, um, as mentioned. We also kept five sensors um, back for a school project in which um, we are at the end of this year, hopefully coronavirus dependent, if not next year. Uh, the schools will write their air quality management plan and um, the five best schools, which judged by a board of West Cotec staff and also Central Bedfordshire staff, um, will choose the, the winners and they will all win an air quality monitor for their school. And um, once installed, they'll be able to see, obviously, as you can see from the front, the colours. Um, so it goes from green, which is good air quality, all the way to a kind of purpley colour, which is what which they call Armageddon. So really, really bad. You don't want to see that. And um, we've also installed a plate beneath this as well, showing what the different colours mean and uh, different pollution levels. Um, since we installed the Bedfordshire one, we've also worked with a private company um, who asked us to tie in the levels to a electronic sign. Since the successful implementation of the project with Central Bedfordshire Council, um, we were then looking to work with different authorities and also any private sites that came to us um, in relation to activating electronic signage. Um, it's an idea we've had for a number of years, um, but at the time we didn't have the, first of all, the air quality monitor um, or a site that we could actually deploy it on. One of the first companies that came to us were actually based on the outskirts of Leicester. And what they were trying to achieve was to encourage their staff not to use their kind of their cars and their motorbikes to get to work. And a lot of them live within the vicinity of their offices anyway. So the whole idea was to encourage active travel. And at the moment, that is a really key thing that the government is trying to increase. What they wanted to do was display um, in real time the air quality levels really simply so that people were able to look at this sign as they entered work and say, right, okay, the air quality, the air quality levels aren't so good today. Maybe tomorrow I'll choose to walk or cycle. Um, so we thought, absolutely brilliant. Let's uh, let, let's run with this. So we got uh, our design team to the drawing board and we came up with a sign that actually uses a lot of elements from one of our most successful speed signs. So it has a smiley face if you're going the speed limit and it has an angry face if you go above the speed limit. So we use that. And instead of the speed element, we change the text to air quality good and air quality poor. And obviously, if air quality is good, you get the happy green face. If the air quality is poor, you get the sad, depressed face beneath. So that's what we came up with. We sent that to the customer and they were extremely happy with that. Um, the next step was to integrate the air quality sensor with the sign um, so that it would react within half a second, um, depending on the air quality levels. That was successful and um, we were able to mount the air quality sensor to a solar kit to pour the sign and I actually visited site recently and did some recording there. I'm currently on a private site to look at the recent installation of our solar powered air quality monitor 
uh, that we've installed. As you can see at the top there, the air quality monitor is currently showing green, which means the air quality is good and it's a beautiful day, which is nice. Uh, the information is broadcast live in real time uh, to an online map, which can be viewed by everybody who purchased the equipment as well as the public if enabled. Uh, it also has a publishing function which can alert uh, anybody if for any reason the air quality uh, starts to deteriorate. Uh, this is the first installation we've actually tied it in with our electronic sign, um, which you can see here. So if the air quality is good as it is now, the sign will display air quality good with a green smiley face. At the moment, as you can see, the sign isn't illuminated because what the people here chose to do was to only illuminate it during the morning hours and afternoon hours when the, the most vehicle movements are coming in and out of the car park. Um, if the air quality was bad, the monitor would be red and also the display would say air quality poor with a red depressed face. The air quality monitor that we've installed on site is reporting live real time to an online website which can be accessed by anybody um, who purchased the equipment. Well, there's also a widget that can be placed online which can be viewed by the public. The interactive map can also be viewed by the public if that is wished by the customer. Um, in some circumstances though that information may want to be stored internally. I would also like to give you a really brief overview of the early back end um, that you'll see. Uh, the map is actually accessible online through any browser. So you'll see up here, early.org forward slash map. You can have a look at that in your, in your own time if you'd like to. Every sensor that's been enabled um, and published online can be seen here. So I've zoomed in uh, on the central Bedfordshire area. So that was where the project we've currently got is going on at the moment. All the green circle dots, they're, they're currently transmitting data real time. And the square ones are different sites. So I'll start off by choosing one of the early ones. If I click that one here uh, on the left hand side, so again, real time, you get to see the PM levels, uh, the NO2 level, the O3 levels, um, and you've got temperature, humidity, pressure and wind speed as well. One of the most interesting things about this is once you've had a sensor there for a number of weeks, if not months, you can see a forecast. So you might be able to see tomorrow and um, what happened yesterday and current days. So once you've got the information there, it gives you chance to look at why you might be having issues so if the air, if the air pollution is bad at a certain time of day and um, for a number of weeks at the same time you might think right well, let's have a look and see what's going on it might be to do the increased uh, vehicle flow it could be any diversion routes that people are using and um, so once you've got that there you can have a look and just see what is what's actually happening uh, down the bottom you can see uh, information for the sponsor so if a local authority have purchased this that will be your name there if a private site have funded it they can have their name there um, in Poland, um, there's a big uptake by Aviva. So what they do is they will pay for the monthly running cost for the early sensors, just to say that they're a sponsor. They publish it on their website as well, and it, it shows them they're kind of members of the public that they're involved with tackling air pollution. Another thing you can do is there's a code for a widget, and um, you're able to display on any website. And um, so a lot of the private sites we've worked with really love this as well. And um, so people have access to it. I mean. For, for example, if someone is thinking about driving into work, they might have a look on the website first to see, oh, blimey, their quality is um, quite good today, so I'll walk. Another day they might see it's quite bad, so they might choose not to. Um, or on the flip side of that, if they see the air quality is bad, they might choose to use active travel to try and bring the levels down. Um, so that's something that can be copied anywhere, um, either to a private website or a public website. If I zoom out of here, you'll see there's a, I mean, in the UK, there's a fairly big sensor array now, but obviously if we're trying to increase that. If I then show you in the home country of Airly, Poland, the kind of coverage they've got, this is exactly what we're aiming for. So there you can see Krakow, Warsaw, pollution's really good around there on the outskirts and around the middle. It, it's looking bad. So and understand from Airly that the reason it is so good in Krakow and Warsaw now compared to the other areas is because they've had these sensors now running live for a couple of years they've done something about it. So they've banned vehicle movements and they've increased electric cars in certain cities and active travel. Um, there's, there's been some big grants available there you know, to encourage people and it's it's obviously doing a good job. So we're hoping obviously that it's something we can bring to the UK as well. With two successful projects now under Westcotec's belt, um, first of all, the private site with the air quality signage and central Bedfordshire with a live network array of sensors. And um, we then started looking at what else we could do um, with the air quality sensor. So we're involved with a project now, a school streets project with a number of boroughs in London, um, which is deploying school street signage. So the whole idea with school streets is to 
close the roads outside of the school in the morning and evening periods when school children are leaving and uh, entering school. Um, so we actually designed a school street sign, an interactive one, um, as far as we're aware, first of its kind, where you can upload information to it, such as exempt permit holders or differential times you want to change, road names, um, or even events outside of the school. Um, at the moment, we this is still in the development stage, we're talking with the boroughs, but we're hoping that within the next six months, these will actually be available and, and deployed um, on the road network. Um, this is, it seems to be starting in London at the moment, but this will be a nationwide thing. So I know there's a lot of Scottish um, authorities that are deploying these as well at the moment. Because um, you are closing the roads outside of the schools, vehicle movements are going to decrease um, and in turn, air quality should improve. So from an early point of view, especially with the school streets, what we decided was um, we'd make it standard that an air quality monitor would be mounted to these signs. Um, the cost implication is really small. Um, so when we went back to the customer and explained this, they were more than happy to include it um, yeah, within the order. So what the idea is that when this sign is installed with the sensor on the back, the sign won't turn on for a number of weeks. So it will actually be before the project starts with closing the road. Um, that is to have an idea of what the air quality levels were like before they start closing the road. Um, so you have a before and after proof of concept, if you like. Um, so as soon as the sign is turned on and the vehicle stopped, you should see a, a really high increase in air, good air quality. Um, that information will then be available on the interactive map that I've showed you, um, which is open to the public. So they can also see what's going on. Um, they might then see that maybe in the morning in a certain area, the pollution levels are still quite high. And mm. um, that could be because uh, parents are still driving where possible within the vicinity of the school. That might change the opinion of the children and also the parents to walk or cycle and um, back to the whole active travel um, encouragement as well. Um, so that's where we can see ourselves mm. next um, in relation to the school streets project and air quality monitoring. Wescotec's next steps um, using this air quality monitoring technology is to be able to do an intelligent diversion system. Um, it, something else that we've also thought about for a number of years now. Um, we're able to detect vehicle classes and we've been doing that for a number of years. We used to use inductive loops and we've then mo mostly gone away from that now with the, with the introduction of above ground detectors um, which can classify. Um, we use a lot of that for our bridge strike systems to look at overheight vehicles before low bridges. Um, and we can also use thermal cameras for our intelligent collision avoidance systems at junctions, which detect vehicle movements and where they're placed. So with this technology, and if you add in the air quality side as well, what we're, what we're trying to do, and we'd like to find someone to work with us and do this and deploy it somewhere, is when a large vehicle such as a HGV is detected, um, heading towards a city centre, and there's an air quality monitor in the city centre, when that pollution level is high, we would like to be able to divert the HGV a different route, maybe around the ring road, maybe miss the city completely. Because um, I know a lot of sat navs that don't tie up exactly um, where they can and can't be going. Um, with that in place, you'd be able to have a, an array of different electronic signs linked to the air quality monitor, just to make sure that if that air quality level is really poor and high, um, you can get the high pollutant vehicles away um, from the area, especially city centres who have a lot of um, buses, it's going to be high anyway, so anything you can do to reduce that uh, amount of pollution um, will certainly be a good thing.